Hello, everybody. Happy November. Happy fall. Happy autumn. I am so glad that you are here with me today. Thank you so much. My name is Lily. And in today's video, I am going to be making some little fall house pockets from envelopes. And these are a standard number 10 envelope. I'm showing you one of the fall journals that I completed just a few days ago. I have the video for a full, full flip through of all three down below. And I want to show you how I use these little fall house envelope pockets in each of the journals. Um, I've been making these for several months now, and I now like to include them in all of the junk journals, in fact, in the very first page. And and I like um, theming them up. Is that a word, theming? It is to me. <laughs> and so for these journals, I made fall fall themed um, envelope house pockets. And I'm going to show you exactly how um, I did this. And but I just want to show you how how I use them in this junk journal. And I was going to put this this video up before the flip through. But I edited the flip through first. And so that's why it is up. So if you've already watched the flip through video, and you are here to watch the little the making of these little fall houses, Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. And these can be used for all kinds of things, for gift giving in lieu of a birthday card or a holiday card. And then I like to have them as floating pockets in the journals. I don't glue them down because on the reverse, you can journal on them if you want to. Or if you're giving it as a gift, you can add your sentiment to the back of it. So I'm going to leave it out of the junk journal so that we can have it as a, as a, as a sample, as a sample, yeah, yeah, as inspiration so that I can make these two from these yellow envelopes. These again are a number 10 size envelope. They are standard, they are just the regular letter size envelopes. And these yellow, these are yellow because they came in in an invoice, like to return payment. And I save all of this type of envelope and also junk mail envelopes. If you don't have any of those, you can always use a brand new number 10 envelope. And in fact, any size that you have. So there's no right or wrong. This is just how I have been making them for the past several months. And the first thing that we want to do is seal the envelope. And I'm only using a little bit of adhesive because we're going to eventually use this as a pocket and I don't want the glue to seep through and to the inside of the envelope because then it, it defeats the purpose. So that is all I'm doing, just sealing them here. And now I am going to take a snippet off the top of the envelope. If you use junk mail envelopes, I tear my envelopes from the very top just like this, and then you're already one step ahead and you have an instant pocket. So I'm just taking off just a snippet from the top just to open it. So you could see just a sliver, sliver of that envelope. And now we have two vertical envelope pockets, but we're not done. This is it's a longer video because I am going to show you step by step how how I make these. Uh, the ones that I've made just recently or before this, I, I went through kind of quickly uh, because the whimsical ones, the little whimsical ones that I made, that was that one was also pretty long. But I thought I would I would share another one with you. These have become um, very popular, and so I, I thank you. Thank you so much for watching my videos. So I've, I'm folding over, oh, what is that? Maybe a third of the flap down. I don't measure. If you wanna measure and you wanna be exact, then you go right ahead. I don't, I just fold it over and kinda eyeball the size of the roof that I want. And I wanna say it's about a third of the ways down. And then I fold it over. And now I'm going to cut open the sides and notice how I am going about, what is that, maybe a quarter of an inch to half an inch past the fold line. And I'm demonstrating there with the bone folder. And there's a reason why we do that. And you'll see, you'll see why I am going past that fold line. So very carefully, I'm just snipping the sides. And again, just going past that fold line 
about a quarter of an inch to half an inch. And for some reason, it works, you guys. Even though I am not measuring, it works. And so you kind of eyeball it. And you want to make sure you get it even on both sides again. If you would like to take a ruler and make precise measurements so you don't cut too far down, go ahead. You do what works best for you. Um, and I've not used a ruler and they've turned out just fine. So it's, a, it's entirely up to you. So this is the reason why we go past the fold line. I am going to carefully, completely fold over that flap and it, ev it evens out on both sides and you wanna make it level to the edges and it kind of stops on its own where the cut ends. It just, it's like magic. And then I take my bone folder and crease it. Watch again here. And then fold it over. And because they are evenly cut on both sides or somewhat evenly, it just works. It stops and then I even it to the sides to make sure, to try to get it as, as level as, as possible. I just cut a little excess of that flap. And you could see there is an, a half an inch gap, about a half an inch gap between the pocket and the fold. And the reason why I do this, this is important. <laughs> the reason why I do this is so you can get your fingers in there. So you can easily, easily put a tag in there, a card, whatever you want. And it's just, it makes it easy to be able to take your fingers and place the things in there. So I'm going to cut the excess of that flap, but not to the edge. Okay. Most of it is coming off, but do you see how there's still a small piece that's folded over that little flap? I'm leaving that there on purpose to reinforce that pocket, adding a small bit bead of glue and just folding it over. And that makes it so that when you insert things into that pocket, it's reinforced and it will not tear easily. Of course it's paper. And so if you try hard, or not hard enough, you will eventually tear it. So again, I'm just going to fold that over. And if you want to avoid all that step, you can fold the entire flap down to reinforce it even more. But we don't need all of that excess. In fact, those, those excess pieces, I have a little box on the side and they become my scratch paper. That's what I jot notes down on. So now you could see we now have the foundation or the base of our little house. That top flap is in quotation marks, the roof. And then the bottom half is the facade. So now we get to have even more fun and we are going to embellish it. Now I have all of my fall goodies in this tray so that everything, once I start making the projects, everything is within reach. All of my little embellishments, the ones that I've made, um, stickers and all of that within arm's reach. I made some... Um, clusters from the junk papers that I had left over and I keep them in this little acrylic drawer. Now I had some that were pre-made but the colors weren't right and so I made a couple of extras and you see them um, just above my left hand in that little dish but I'm showing you how easy it is to take a couple uh, papers maybe some book prints some music paper and then little strips of fabric. You guys, I save everything and everything goes in its place so that when I get to the point where I need to make more clusters, they're all contained. All the little bit, bits and pieces are contained in that acry acrylic drawer. And then this right here is a box of scrap papers. These are all the scraps and offcuts from the scrapbooking papers that I've used for the fall journals. And what I like to do is as I'm using the papers to do die cutting or punching or sizing down the signature pages, the front cover, the journaling cards, all of those things, all of the scraps go into this box. So when I'm building ephemera and making clusters, everything that I've used that is fall related is all in one area and I just go in there and it makes it so everything is cohesive. And I try to use every single little bit of paper. All of these strips were left over from the rosettes that I made. And 
Some of you may throw away these little scraps. I keep them separate and I use them for clusters or I use them as faux washi tape. Um, so all of these little strips always come in handy. So to make a cluster, all you do is you layer your pieces, you add a little bit of glue, and I, I take it one step further and I run it through the sewing machine. And I'll show you the stitching. I hope it comes up there. It is a gold thread and so it's very subtle, but on the reverse you could see the black thread. And in fact, this little cluster looks good in either um, on either side. I like that. So I keep all of those little bits and pieces ready to make clusters in my little acrylic drawer. And when I don't have anything else to work on, I just pull that little drawer and start sewing all of those little clusters and embellishments. And so I try to keep an array of colors um, that will work perfectly in my junk journals. Okay, so now we are going to collage the front the inside and the back. And again, I am going to pull papers from my scrap box, my fall themed container. And I'm, I'm looking for pages or papers that are long enough or wide enough so that they can cover the inside of the, um, of the envelope and the outside as well. And I happen to have these off cuts, which is great. Otherwise, I'd be paper piecing and doing a collage with, with smaller bits and pieces. But I'm going to use a larger one here. Now, we are going to line the inside of the pocket. And this envelope happens to be 3 and 7 eighths wide. So I'm going to take my scrapbooking paper and I am going to cut it just shy of three and seven eighths because I want to make sure it slips into the pocket easily. If I cut it even, even uh, um, to the width of the envelope, it's not going to slide into the pocket because it's the same size. So we are just going to go a sliver, a sliver under three and seven eighths. I'm also measuring, see the length of this envelope is that one's nine inches long. Does that mean it's not a number 10 envelope? <laughs> I usually just say number 10 because that's usually the size. Um, but you saw the length of it is a little over nine inches, nine inches long. I am not going to line the entire length of the inside of the pocket. There's no need to. So I'm only going to line it about just enough to where you can't see the inside. And you'll see what I'm... You'll see what I mean in just a moment. Lots of measuring, you guys. Lots of measuring and lots of cutting. And you'll see I grab my ruler a lot because measure twice. No, what is it? Yes, measure twice, cut once. Yeah. Otherwise, I end up with more scraps in my little scrap box. So cutting these down to three and shy of seven eighths. It's not even three and six eighths. It's between six eighths and seven eighths. So what is that? Three and 13 sixteenths <laughs> of an inch. Your envelope is a different size from my envelope. So, so just know that it needs to be a little bit smaller. Do you see how it was just perfect? That one I did do three and seven eighths. So I'm just gonna trim off a little sliver. It is super tiny. It's like thread thread thin. You could see that. And now it's going to fit perfectly in that pocket. And notice how it is not nine inches long. It is only about four inches long because I cut it just enough so that it fits into the pocket and it gives the illusion that the entire length of it is, is lined. It's very similar to doing the envelope liners for greeting cards. Same concept. And now this one also will slip in perfectly and I'm going to glue it down. And I wanna make sure it is flush to the very top edge, but it is inserted deep enough so where none of that yellow is showing. So now do you see what we're doing? Yes! It's easier when you have all of your bits and pieces 
ready. Get your scraps, get your embellishments, have your paper trimmer or your scissors handy. So that once you get started, you're just go, go, go. I'm adding a glue. I like to use a wet glue for this. Um, I had the, the stick, the glue stick handy. The wet glue is more forgiving so that you can move the paper around and it doesn't want to stick immediately. Um, I've used tape runner in the past and for that you have to be super careful because once you put that paper down, it's stuck. So I recommend wet glue. Or even the glue stick works fine because it, it does give you a few seconds to, of uh, flexibility to be able to move that paper around. I'm trimming off the excess and it's just a tiny little sliver so it's not going to make a big difference to the roof of the house. Fold as you go. So this is the same fold that we initially made. And because you've now lined the inside, it's a little bit thicker, but you want to fold as you go. That's really important because we need, we're going, going to layer it a couple of times. And so you want to keep those creases visible so that the folds can be done easily. And that's why I uh, fold over and crease as I go. It's fun to use double-sided papers for this. You don't have to, but, but you could, but um, you have more variation. I know that in the past I stayed away from purchasing double-sided papers because it just made it so difficult to choose a side. Uh, but now I have a mindset of where I just cut, I cut all my paper up, I cut all my ribbon up. Um, I love going through and using my supplies. And so if I wanted to make these two different, I would have reversed this one so that it wasn't twinning that first one. So again, just trimming off the excess. You don't have to, but if you want to clean it up, you can. I'm going to go in a little while and ink up the edges. And so it would have covered up that sliver of yellow anyhow. But if your lines aren't straight, just go ahead and even them out with your scissors. So again, folding over and creasing as I go along. If you go through your scraps to do this and you don't have larger pieces of scraps, you could use smaller pieces and just collage them on the inside. You can also use book pages, old dictionary pages, uh, gift wrap, just whatever you have in your scrap box. The very first video I made, they were little whimsical houses and I actually used jelly print paper because that's what I had and I love using jelly print paper for collage. In fact I need to get busy and make more jelly prints because I am just about out because I use it I use them a lot. I love jelly printing you guys. Jelly printing is my jam. Okay so now we are going to glue down the facade or the front of the house. If you want to know how I came up with this idea, that is in the Little Whimsical House video. I talk about um, the inspiration to create these. And so much fun. It was just by happenstance that these were created and and I'm so glad that I did because I'm having it's one of the one of the funnest projects that I have created and I've not stopped making them I keep making them and all kinds of themes too notice how the bottom is longer I have cut it in the past flush with the bottom edge and I also fold it over entirely up to you. If you don't want to cut it, just glue it over because for these, I will be embellishing or collaging the back. And that's because it has um, the address and the, the, the um, postmark or postage, all of that on there, which really doesn't bother me, but the, the address there, it 
it's going to get in the way. If it were a plain envelope, I would not bother covering it up because it's blank and you can, you can write over that. But for this one, we are going to collage the back, so I'm folding over the papers. I also have a video where I make pockets very similar to this, but they're not little houses. And it is a video that I filmed in 2020. So it's, it's a, the beginning, early 2020. And if you want to see that video, um, I'll link it down below. But it's also, I think it is my most watched video. I think it has over 15,000 views. And it's titled, How I Repurpose Junk Mail Envelopes to Make Pockets. And so I'll link it down below. But you can also go over to my YouTube homepage. And you'll see a list of my most popular videos on the homepage. Or you could go to the video section. And you can just peruse and browse all of the videos that I have there. And I, I appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos, you guys. It means a lot to me and I'm very grateful. Look at them, they're taking shape. Now I'm going to decorate the roof of these little pockets. Notice how my inspiration to the right, it has a wood grain scrapbooking paper. I don't have any more of that or I didn't have any more scraps and I didn't wanna go pull out an entire sheet. The whole purpose of making these little house pockets is to use up our scraps as best as we can. Um, but I suppose if I use a new sheet of, of scrapbooking paper that has that, that wood grain on it, then I could make more scraps, right? But then I would have the never ending container of scraps and what we want is to use them up, you know, in, in projects. So I'm selecting more papers from the fall container and cutting them down to size and this one will be three and seven eighths wide because I want to cover up the width of that flap. And it will be a, a little bit longer than the actual flap because I'm going to fold it over at the top, just like I did with the facade paper and folded it over at the bottom. This one will be folded over at the top. And it just adds, it adds a, a decorative element to the back of the envelope, but it also reinforces the folds at the bottom and at the top. And it doesn't make it, you know, you, you would think that after layering the inside and then layering the top, that it would make it difficult to open it, but it really doesn't. And that's why I say crease as you go, because then it makes the folds and the flaps much more flexible. So just smoothing it out with my bone folder, making sure that it really adheres. These houses will look cohesive because all of the papers are kind of they work well together, all of these warm shades, these muted tones. So much fun making the fall junk journals, you guys. So much fun. I only made three of them. I wish I had made more, but I also made them during a time where I was really, I was, I got really busy. And it doesn't mean I don't craft every day. I still make and find time to craft. But I had to do it in smaller increments. So I've talked in the past of how I started training for, for a 5K. Um, just one day after my 53rd birthday, I decided I wanted to start running. <laughs> Not just walking, you guys, but actually running. Now, I've been participating in 5Ks for a few years, but always kind of just walked maybe jogged a little bit, but mainly walked. Um, but, but then after my 53rd birthday, you guys, which was in August this summer, I decided I wanted to stop running. And the reason is, um, 
I wanted to build strength and endurance. I want to keep, um, I want to stay f- as flexible and as agile as possible in my older age. And I thought, well, let's, let's just start running. Let's just see how that goes. And it's nice. You don't need any equipment. You don't have to rely on anybody. Um, the only thing that may work against you sometimes is the weather. And right now it is snowing outside and I did not go running. And I did not go to the gym to use the treadmill or the track there. So, <laughs> so today I'm going to call today a rest day. Anyway, what I did is I just got out one day, and I remember it was August 22nd. I got dressed, and I went outside, and I first I started walking, and then when my body said, okay, let's run, I just started running. And then when I get tired, I'd stop, catch my breath, and do it all over again. I started out doing about two and a half miles every day. I run five days a week. And then, little by little, I started adding more distance. And now I am, I run about four, almost five miles every day. Nonstop. I'm still not at the point of running nonstop. I do have to stop and catch my breath, but you guys, I time my stops and my stops are anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds. Catch my breath, make sure my heartbeat Um, make sure my heart isn't coming out of my chest and then I take off again. So I was doing this for two months. Last Saturday on October 29th was my 5k and I did the same 5k last year. It's called the um, Haunted Half 5k and it's in Provo, Utah and I did it last year and it was fun. I did it with my family and I walked and I had a great time. This year I did it because I wanted to beat my time. Last year, I finished it in 47 minutes and some seconds. And you guys, my training paid off. I finished it in 38 minutes and nine seconds. Blew my mind. Blew my mind. You guys, you have no idea how excited I was. I shed some tears. I was so excited. I really did. My daughter was there, my son-in-law, my other son-in-law, my grandkids. And they have been so supportive, like you have no idea, encouraging me, coaching me, giving me tips. And I was a little bit skeptical, you know. I thought, oh, have I I been training enough? I'm still learning. I'm only a beginner. But it paid off 3.1 miles in 38 minutes and 9 seconds, and I was ecstatic. So... My, one of my son-in-laws, he ran the half marathon. So we waited for him to finish. He comes, he finishes, he finishes third in his age group. He's amazing. And then he asks how I did. And I I was like, I did great. I beat my time by almost 10 minutes. He says, let me see your little printout paper. I show him my little printout paper. And he says, you got third place in your age group. I said, no, knock it off. Yes, look at that little paper. That's what it means, AG3PL. That means age group, third place. I had no idea. I didn't know how to read the little printouts. He says, you get a winner's medal for coming in third place. Oh, I cried some more, you guys. I literally cried. I could not believe it, could not believe it. Okay, let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm taking some uh, vintage photo and I am just going around and inking the edges. So I talked about how some of that little yellow shows on the edges. No big deal. We're going to cover it up with some vintage photo. And I'm going to do the the facade and the inside of the envelope, not so much on the back. Okay, so because I won third place and I didn't know, I missed the award ceremony. Ceremony. They would have called my name. I would have been on stage, received my medal. I was bummed about that, but I still couldn't believe that I got third place. I really thought I came in 251 because it said 251 of 754 of the females that participated. I was excited about that. That I was just over the moon. So I go over to the winner's area, the podium where all of that is in the awards. And I talked to the gal that's there and I show her my paper and I said, I think I got third place. I thought I was 251. She says, oh honey, you did get third place. Here's your winner's medal. (laughs) And she gave me, 
So you get a medal for participating in the 5K, but then you get another medal if you win. Oh my gosh, the tears were just flowing, you guys. Flowing. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of washi tape for two reasons. One of them because it's cute. And the second reason is it reinforces that the edges. Because we've only layered paper on the front and layered paper on the side, if you go to reach into that pocket, the, the edges might split because there's nothing holding those edges. Do you know what I mean? And so I'm going to fold over some washi tape just so it strengthens the pocket even more. We don't want to, we don't want to over strengthen it because we want to be able to, um, to open that pocket. We don't want it too sturdy. So washi tape is perfect for this. This is my favorite washi tape right now, you guys. So it's from Dina Wakely and I've ordered both sets of her washi tape because they have hearts printed on them. And I love her mixed media look and she created washi tape that mimics her style or that represents her style. Well, of course she drew it. And oh my gosh, I love these washi tapes so much like you have no idea. I love hearts. I love the heart shape. I love using hearts on everything. And in those little whimsical houses that I've made in the past, I actually take hearts and attach them to the roof. So it kind of gives the look of a chimney, but it's in a heart shape. You guys have to watch that video. It's so cute. So this washi tape blends perfectly with this color scheme. So again, just wrapping it around to reinforce those edges. So yes, you guys, I get participation medal and then I get a winner's medal. I had no idea. I wasn't even aiming to place in the top three. I really wasn't. I was just challenging myself to do better than I did last year. But last year really doesn't count because I ran, I, I walked last year and this year I ran. Now I run slow, you guys, but I'm still running. And I did stop three times, one during the first mile for 10 seconds, one, and then again, during the second mile for another 10 seconds, and then during the third mile for another 10 seconds, just to catch my breath. I wore my headphones, you guys, so that I could listen to my music as I was running. And that last song helped me finish the race. And I, I pushed myself a little bit more. And it's a song called Battery by Metallica. And that one just kicked my butt. And it said, you could do this. And I did. I did. Oh, so exciting, you guys. I'm a huge Metallica fan, by the way. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm from the 80s, you guys. Big hair and glam rock and, and, and the rock. And if you're familiar with my Etsy shop, the name of my shop is called Made by Rockalily. Yes, there's a whole, there's a whole story behind that, but it's basically because I really like the rock music. Okay. So now we are going to piece little papers together to create doors and windows and all those cute little elements to make it look like a little house. I love that, what is that, that houndstooth paper, I think that's what it is, but it was too short for a door and that was, you saw where I took that from, I took it from a piece of leftover from die cutting and I wish it was longer I could have made a short door but it was too I think it was too short and so I'm just piecing it by adding an extra little bit of paper to kind of give it the length and for this one I'm just using one piece of paper so we're just going to make a quotation mark door and you can use I've used tags in the past and tags and labels, anything that is rectangular shape goes. Use your imagination. Use things that you would normally use, but this is the fun part. Paper piecing is the fun part. Now you'll notice on my inspiration little house that I have a little window there. And that came from scrapbooking paper. And I'll show you what I did in just a moment. This is a scrapbooking paper and I used it 
in the other journals. And it is the cover of the very first signature of the other journals. And all I did is fussy cut two little windows for these journals. For the other one, I used three. But I am so glad I had this scrapbooking paper. Unfortunately, I don't know where it came from, you guys. I've had it in my stash for a long time. And in fact, I didn't know how to use it. And so it came in perfect perfect for the fall junk journals. And I edited or I cut out me fussy cutting the two little windows. And now I'm just going to glue them down. I have also used circle die cuts as a window and stickers as a window in every shape. Circle, square, heart. So again, use your imagination. Go through your stash Go through your stickers, go through your die cuts. It doesn't have to be a window. We're just making it, it, it's just to give the illusion of a window. I happen to have these frames that really do look like a window, but again, use your imagination, you guys. And if you don't want to add a window, don't add a window, but it looks cute with a window. This is my fall box of embellishments. It is a cute little box I picked up at Dollar Tree a couple months ago. And in it, I house all of my fall embellishments. It's really nice to be able to keep or group themed items together because if you know you need a fall leaf, you know exactly where to go. If you need a fall sticker, if you need an acorn, all of those things will live in that fall box. I also have a Christmas box where I keep all my Christmas embellishments. And I have a heart box and then I have a Halloween box. So that works for me. Grouping my items works for me like that by holiday or by season. These are cute dimensional glitter stickers. I believe they are made from resin. And I'm just adding more adhesive to it because I, they're kind of heavy and I want to make sure that they do not fall off. And then I have these other cute glitter fall leaf stickers and they have a little gem in the center and we're going to use these to give it the look of a doorknob so it doesn't have to be a doorknob it doesn't have to be a circle it doesn't have to be a little triangle it can be whatever you want and if you want to have a leaf shaped doorknob then you go ahead and do it i am so much fun so much fun to think outside the box and just use up what we have to create whatever it is that we're working on. I love these so much. They are so stinking cute, you guys. I hope you make some. <laughs> okay, so now let's work on the rooftop and I'm going to reach over for the little clusters and I'm going to further embellish them. I used Tim Holtz word stickers from the Occasions booklet. And on the Inspiration House, there is a little acorn. That acorn is from an old Stampin' Up! punch that my sister has let me borrow. But we're not going to do acorns because I thought I would use some leaves. And I have plenty of leaves in this container. So let's just use some leaves. And these are leaves that are die cut from a Tim Holtz Bigs die. Notice how the one on the right hand side, I have already grungied it up. I have a video, I have a video um, how I make these, I think it's called how to make realistic looking fall leaves, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do it here. I take a plain die cut and I'm going to make some creases. So on the reverse side with my nail, I'm just going in and pinching it and folding it so that we have those crease marks on the opposite side, okay? So just go in there and you wanna follow where the natural veining of the leaves would be. And now we are going to stain it with some vintage photo. I'm just gonna go around the edges to make it look grungy, to make it look like a weathered leaf, to make it look like a fall leaf. So just grungy that all around the edges and now I am going to fold those creases. Now I've already pinched them on the other side so it's easier to fold on this side. And I'm just gonna go over it with my distress tool 
and highlight those folds to make it look like natural veining. Yes, girl! <laughs> this I did by total accident. When I was working on the three junk journals and I was distressing the ed edges of the die cuts, one of them accidentally folded and it folded just perfect to where it looked like natural veining. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look what I discovered. I'm sure somebody else is already out there doing it, <laughs> but it's new to me. And so then I went back and I did it to all of them. And that's how I got the look of a realistic fall leaf. They look grungy. They look like they've, they've been on the trail. Oh my gosh, it's snowing outside and it's coming down pretty heavy. That's why I didn't run today, you guys. That's why. Because I knew it was going to rain. I didn't, but let's just say I did. <laughs> or snow. I'm sorry. I meant snow. So now we are going to glue these leaves on those little clusters that I've already pre-made. By the way, if you guys have watched me long enough of my, in my videos, sometimes when I say um, I'm showing you, I'm doing like flip throughs or I'm showing you what I'm working on, uh, I'll say card instead of tag. And I say glue instead of sew. I say flower instead of leaf. And then I'll say envelope instead of tag. Anyway, so sometimes my words don't match up with the visual. <laughs> but I hope you know what I'm talking about. And I did that a lot in the flip through of the three fall journals. I did. I just get so excited. I get way ahead of myself. And there's no stopping me, you guys. Once I start talking, there's no stopping me. This is a cute little spatula, you guys. I picked this little spatula up. Oh my gosh, I can't remember if it was from Hobby Lobby or from the Dollar Tree. It is an inexpensive silicone spatula, and I think it's Easter theme. But it's perfect when you're using hot glue if you don't have one of those silicone sil silicone finger protectors, then you can use one of these silicone spatulas to press things down. That way you don't burn your fingers. I grabbed the Tim Holtz Occasion sticker booklet and I'm almost out of the Thanksgiving or the fall themed stickers, but I still have a few left. I used a lot of those in the... Uh, in the fall junk, junk journals. Well, not a whole lot, but enough to where I'm almost done. I love the Tim Holtz sticker booklets. I have several, but the occasions one is one that I use the most. I may have two. I may have two of these. And Christmas. So Christmas stickers are almost gone too. So just layering on those little clusters, it is, these are so fun to make because you are literally working with scraps of paper, things that would normally end up in the trash, but we are makers. We are paper crafters. We do not throw paper away. No. And if you do, don't stop. <laughs> so now I'm, I think I'm looking for more embellishments to add, but I think I call it good. I'm like, okay, I don't need any more embellishments. Oh, yes, I was looking for these sunflower die cuts. These are from Hobby Lobby. I've had these for a while, and I'm going to distress the edges. Now, notice how the surface of those sunflowers are glossy. If I use distress ink, it's just going to slide right off. It is not going to adhere or stay with permanence on that sunflower. So I'm going to distress the edges with some stays on because once the stays on dries, it is permanent on that glossy surface. I found that out by happenstance. It just made sense. Stays on, you know, that is waterproof and a more permanent type of ink. I suppose our Ranger, uh, Ranger's archival ink would do the same, but I don't think I have brown. Black would have been good too. So again, just distressing those edges. And it doesn't, it doesn't mess up my distress tool. Works just as fine. Ink is ink. So once those dry, those are good to go. Just cleaning up my mat. I've switched, have you seen how many glues I've switched 
between. I've used the art glitter glue, which is the liquid white glue. I've used my glue stick, and then I've also used my, my uh, glue gun. So there's no right or wrong. You use whatever works for you. So now I'm just going to attach these with some art glitter glue. What I like about it is it dries very fast and it, it has a strong hold. For this one, I'm using the glue gun. I don't know why I chose to use this, but I did. And I'm only adding glue to the bottom half of the sunflower because it's going to um, protrude at the top a little bit. So it kind of looks like it's a chimney, but it's not, it's a flower. To look like a chimney or to take the place of where a chimney would be. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Again, the fun part is using your imagination and using all of these um, elements for your little houses. Nothing is scale to size, you guys. Um, not everybody has giant leaves on their roof like this <laughs> or giant sunflowers as chimneys uh, or fall leaf stickers as doors, picture frames as windows. Nothing is to scale. There are no rules here. Everything goes. Everything. And look at how beautiful it is taking shape. The final thing we are going to do is bring it in all together by framing the edges. So I'm going to do a doodly border all around the edge of the facade and also the door. Now I grab my white pen for the dark door so that it pops and it's a little more visible. But usually I just use a plain black pen. Any black pen has worked just fine. This is, I think the that black one on the desk is just a pilot pen. It has my name on it because I take that to work with me and I really like that pen and so I just want to make sure it makes its way back to me. That door needs something because it looks like it's chopped off. And so I'm going to add something just to finish it off so it doesn't look like it was just sawed down the middle or up at the top. So I'll finish it off in just a moment. So grabbing my black pen, going over the door. And what this does is it makes that door pop and kind of stand out from the rest of the house so it just doesn't look like it's blending in. It actually gives more visual interest to do this. So just a couple of squiggly lines and then some little doodly things there. Almost looks like faux stitching. And I'm going to do the same to the facade of the house. I go over it a couple of times. I am not aiming for perfection, you guys. I am... Um, I'm a fast crafter. I go really fast. I don't, I don't make time for straight lines and that applies to my machine stitching too. It's more fun that way. I like things to look a little bit wonky. Um, if I want straight lines and I would use a ruler, but I don't have time for using rulers like that to make straight lines. But if you want to make straight lines, if you want to use a ruler and you don't, or you don't want to do scribbly doodling, you don't have to, okay? When you begin to make these, you are going to make these your own in your own personal style so that when someone sees your little house, they're going to go, oh yeah, that totally says you, totally. Oh my gosh, they are so stinking cute, you guys. So now I, I reached into my little container of die cuts. And these are the rosette centers that I used. And I'm just going to glue it on to the front of that door to make it appear as though it is a little peak hole on the door. I've never seen a peak hole that big on a door, but or it could be like a window on the door. But this way, it doesn't look like the door is just cut off. It looks complete. So stinking cute. I'm debating whether or not to add one on that second door, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to, it doesn't need it. You guys, thank you so much for being here and, uh, and watching my video. I appreciate you guys so much. All related videos to the other 
to the other uh, little houses will be linked down below. The flip through of the three fall junk journals will also be linked down below. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I try to reply to all of the questions and comments as soon as I possibly can, usually within 24 hours. Um, so yeah, give me your feedback, you guys. Your feedback is so appreciated I, I, because I am so grateful that you have taken the time to watch my videos. And so I want to know what you're thinking. Just let me know down below. Okay, you guys, it has been wonderful. Thank you for hanging out with me. I know this one's kind of long and I appreciate you, but look at how stinky cute those are. Oh my gosh. I hope you have fun and I hope you take the time to make some. All right. You guys take it easy. Stay warm and be careful. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take care.